versus a character like Lucina, Dill does not have the patience to be like, uh, she is way too killy for like, uh, nah, keep, keep that away from, nah, Word. nah, 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 nah. No on Blue Black Ops. Ah, I'm going to go Marth. Okay. All right. Actually, yeah, I do kind of see it because, like, the way Dill spaces and the way Diddy uh, inherently spaces, you know, he puts him in that position where it's just like if Marth gets something, it's probably at the edge because he needs to stay away from Diddy, right? So it's going to be a lot of retreating stuff, a lot of retreating hits. So might as well put the heaviest part of that hit at the tip. Of course. Uh, because, like, being able – Lucina would have to do a much more, like, more rush down, like, to get, like, in – and versus Diddy, that's really difficult because you're just going to see, like, those, what we're hearing. Diddy fairs. Whole lot of Diddy fairs. And, and, and Bananas, like, building this wall, like, is too, it's too much. So if you're able to just, like, basically sort sort of fish, for lack of a better term, but, like, just get that over there. And, right. like, once you get that one hit, right, you can, if you have the reaction time for it, which we know that E the Hummingbird does, uh, he'll be able to then press advantage. And Diddy's disadvantage state is actually pretty bad. Especially against a sword. Yeah. Like when Diddy's not in a proper position to throw out fairs and bears, he does not have the tools to contest all of that range and strength that Marcina are able to provide. Right. So what Dill is really going to have to rely on is just that um, he needs to be better than he at neutral. And, uh, you know, anytime he gets small strings, just continuously keep that neutral strong. Because, you know, this is where Diddy is more like Tiny Furry Sheik. Well, time to see it in action. Game 1 is going to be taking us to Smashville and immediately the Dancing Blade coming out. Yeah, Dill immediately trying to read uh, a, a, an approaching fair. And he tried to stuff it out because Diddy's fair would be bigger, at least in that positioning. Um, yeah. But it is worth noting that we haven't seen Dancing Blade coming out from uh, very often with Lucina this evening. Just now realizing that as soon as the mark came out, that tool was back in action. And that previously was a tool that we'd seen Mr. E assert. Um, well, that's because when you with. when you dance, you have finesse, and that is what Marth is. Uh, Lucina is a crazy person <laughs> who doesn't hold... She she hits you with the broad side of the sword, not the sharp. She uses it like, like a club, a baseball bat. She's a monster. <laughs> All right? She's like, I did it for you, great, 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 great granddad. And he's just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but anyway, Dill. I gotta send help. <laughs> uh, Dill able to take that first stock, but uh, he is not trying to. Ooh, Yo, hold up. Where are those barrels? Wow. Good evasion there. And yeah, the barrels are actually doing a pretty good wall for Dill. Dill opting to go immediately for the barrels. I think he was reading that uh, because he was so close that he was going to force an air dodge. But Dill saw right through that and was like, I'm going to come back. And that basically just Ian paved the road for him. You can see he went for a footstool there. Yeah, he's actively trying to threaten with the footstool. And Dill is very aware of that. He's like, nah, keep your boots on. Oh my god, Dill, you're so dumb. But it worked out anyway. Air dodging in that situation is so scary. Because you're falling right into his clutches, but he wasn't able to work it out because he missed. His, he whiffed his grab. <gasps> Tipper of neutral air is going to allow Mister to send Bill deep off stage. But he's not able to get the kill just yet. Bill returning and continuing his advantage. Oh my God, Bill dodging the kill part of that uh, in air. Oh, yo, <laughs> the boy's wilding out right now. He's That's pressing the. The angry buttons. Oh man, he actually almost lived, but dying after hit at the bump percent. Uh, coming back, uh, 63 uh, damage on the board. That's okay, but uh, honestly, it's t it's things like that where it's like, if it if it as is it as good as zero, it could be. You know, uh, Dill has to definitely just press a lot more uh, vantage to make it worth anything. Opting for the monkey kick from the flip just so he could try and assert more stage control. Build up a little damage, safely cross up E. Could yeah. be working so far, and the banana not really putting in too much work whenever E is able to get it for himself. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't, uh, isn't going to have as much practice as the Diddy player uh, with the banana. Or he doesn't, uh, he doesn't play any item character to begin with, so 
um, his item game is going to be slightly weaker just through experiential. Uh, he would have to like kind of work on that. I don't think it's really hurting him, honestly. Uh, not too much. Like it's saying it's like, oh, it's kind of an, an extra. Right. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's not that it's 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 not in E's favor for using it. It's just that it's out of Dill's yeah, favor. Yeah, it's not, right. It's just not a part of his toolkit. So as long as he keeps it away from Dill, that's almost pretty much all he needs to do. Because as long as he's playing to Marth's strengths, he's playing to Marth's strengths. Marth isn't like, gee, I wish I had a banana. Although I think every character does wish they had a banana. But that is besides the point. Oh my God, getting double fisted on yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> Just the bare knuckles. Oh, God, blood on him. <laughs> so, Dill taking game one. Again, this is best of five. This is loser's finals. So, I don't know where we're going to go. I also don't. I think Dill is going to ban Battlefield. And I can't say for certain if we're going to see the uh, the Marths uh, stay. There is a good likelihood of that Lucina coming back. Yeah, maybe. Uh, you know, d despite all uh, all the points I said for playing Marth, you know, she is a monster. Really? Yo! You see, you see Dill smirking. He, he smirked for a moment. The e -sheek? Are we going to go to... Okay, we're not going to... If we went to Town and City, that would be, Dill would have been like, I know all the percents. I watched all of Zenodo's videos. I know exactly how to kill Sheik. So, Misery actually pulling out the Sheik. I did not see this coming. No, this was not a counterpick that I was expecting in the slightest. But it I remember Aussie mentioning this, but I thought he was just a big old dum dum thinking, uh, pulling something from like the past, and not realizing the uh, how time works in a continuous form going forward. <laughs> but uh, clearly, he, he got it right this time. Kudos, Aussie. But you forget, Aussie is one of those uh, those aliens from Arrival. He is a shulk. He is a shulk man. So he, he just sort of perceives time different than us. <laughs> he sees it. So now we're, uh, we do have some percent uh, in E's favor, but Dill is beginning to like really close that gap. Only difference of 14. Um, and yeah, I guess E is going to try to be ultra reserved, you know? The only problem is it's like, Dill understands Cheek very well, you know? And even though E's playstyle does not fit the way Dill would play Cheek, he just knows the character, you right. know? Like, Dill's very learned in this character. Not in this matchup, this character. He knows the follow-ups, he knows the confirms, he knows the tools very intimately from his own Sheik and a lot of his own experiences with playing against other Sheiks. He also knows when things will kill and when they won't. And it's Diddy, and Diddy will definitely kill way sooner. But these edge guards from Mr. E is definitely showing that uh, he's like, look, you think you know it all, but I am a wild card. Certainly. Hummingbirds, man. Yeah, man. He has pulled out this Sheik every once in a blue moon here on the island, and I know he has tried it outside of New York with some success. It's certainly not as well trained as his Marcina, but he's kept it nice and warm on the back burner. Probably got a good chance to grind it while out in the uh, hyperbolic Southern California chamber. Yeah, Dill whiffing a really pivotal uh, down tilt up smash. Ended up getting a dash attack out of it, making E live longer so now he's able to build much more percent on Dill. Yo, what was that up smash? Dill taking, uh, finally taking E's first stock uh, with 76%. Now, um, this is definitely uh, doable for Diddy just because, you know, again, the lack of kill power. Uh, she doesn't have a great all right, this is going to be a little bit of controversy, but her DPS, right, like her individual moves don't do a lot of damage, right? So because he's at this higher percent, she her DPS goes way down. But, oh, my God, really good coverage of all of almost all the options uh, of Dill's recovery. Down tilt, not really going into much for Dill, but able to put on a tiny bit of percentage to E. E, meanwhile, doing a decent job of at least getting these stray hits on while trying to maintain stage control. And I feel like that might be the reason for the Sheik pick. Sheik able to uh, contest for stage control more often than Marcina. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly leading out well as Game 2 goes in favor of Mr. E. Okay. And at least look, me viewing it through that scope makes sense to me in that she has a lot of those tools to contest stage control. Yeah, no, she's she's a fast character, and she has uh, 
quick move. So instead of like doing the thing that like say Ike for example where he keeps like this sweeping move out for a long time, she gets to do little moves and is able to have the time to just react and go, oh, I'll just do it again here and I'll get you out. Um, she's able to be in nine spaces at the same time, able to do uh, the Deku Nut and cover that. So then when you have to recover high, she's fast enough to fair or up air or an air. And all of those things are going to do a really good job of keeping them out, especially the Nair, because it does the two for uh, by actually doing real damage. So Dill uh, counterpicking to FD to fight Sheik. Uh, Eid staying. This is a really smart pick from Dill in that it's a stage where he's able to express a lot more of his patient play and force E down at one route to approach him. There's right. no platforms or awkward angling of this stage to really facilitate multiple routes for E to take. It's just a straight road to him. And Dill has a lot of tools in his kit for making that one road very difficult to traverse. Actually, that's something that's really funny about that previous game counter pick because he's like, uh, I counter pick Smashville, and Dill's like, okay, I'll stay. And he's like, Sheik, haha! <laughs> you know, like, like, whoa, all right, here we go. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, he doing a really good job in reading what Dill's movement was, but wasn't able to execute or, uh, quick enough to get that up smash because that would have definitely taken that stock and would have sent a very powerful message to being like, I know where you're going, what you're doing. He was able to send the message, but because he failed in execution, it's less potent, and it gives Dill that extra chance because now that card has been shown. Landing oh. on stage with the Vanish, very questionable option as Mr. E meets the hands of the monkey, and Dill's gonna be taking a quick lead with only 105% built up onto him. Dill opening a bakery, head. rolling about seven times. <laughs> uh, he's I mean, got it, Danishes, Kaiser rolls. Yo, Kaiser it's, rolls. it's safer that way. Diddy's got good rolls. Mm -hmm. Top baker in the house. Like, when you're in the morning and you're trying to get that bacon, egg, and cheese, like, just go to Diddy. Like, he's got the rolls for you. He'll make a nice sandwich for you. A walk, <laughs> walk link from Dill as he comes back, avoids the 50-50 from E. He's surviving with 127 in counting as E takes his banana, and the banana interrupting the command grab. Oh, my God. Yo, freestyling out here. Doesn't uh, get the full confirm from that uh, the drag down of up air. But it's like, hey, I can still do things. Oh my god, he covered the roll. Dill actually didn't realize that he had the banana set up to cover the roll because if he did, that would have gone really far and I would have said that was really smart. But clearly, he's bringing it back a little bit, uh, sealing off some percent. Uh, Dill was doing a good job of being like, I have this percent lead and I know uh, how, you, how you can kill, so I'm gonna just keep that away because you can't. But now that he lost that stock, falling into that down smash, he's having a pretty good deal of momentum. Oh. That Nair almost setting up for an offstage play, but still quickly getting himself back on the ground. Doing the monkey flip uh, level with the edge because the monkey flip is still a tiny jump that elevates you above it, so he slid right on. Just keeping himself safe, keeping himself alive as he manages the percentage lead over E. And both just trying to feel each other out with these attacks. The forward air from Dill put in a lot of work, occupying tons of space very quickly. Dill immediately reacting to the uh, Deku uh, and just monkey flipping right on. He's like, I'm going to cross you up and grab your face. Diddy's a terrifying character when you actually think about it. Like, he literally does the stereotypical thing where he, like, he grabs on your face. But now we are in that position where uh, even though it is unlikely that she could land a kill move like the diamond cutter there, uh, he was in position for it and like he is always looking for it. So Dill has to be aware because he could have lost that right there. But monkey hands are big. Huge. Big. Massive hands. They are bigger than his face. He might have cancer. <laughs> <laughs> big meaty hands net in Dill games uh, though. All right. So Dill uh, winning that crucial game three. Meaning that now if E is to take the set, he has to do it game five on Dill's counter pick. And counter picking a character like Sheik as Diddy can be really bad for Sheik because of stages like Town and City where he actually does have true combos of up throw up air where she dies at, I kid you not, 100. That's dumb. Oh my god. That's ignorant. That's this current patch. So that's a really bad situation. So I understand him switching back to Marth because now he has to 
basically he's thinking a game ahead of the time in uh, because he needs to win this, but he has to also like cover his bases on what character he needs to go. It is Dill's counter pick, and Dill's probably gonna stay Diddy, so it's all like dependent on the stage. And it looks like Game Four is taking us to battlefields. Very smart pick, I'd say, after all the movement that we saw executed from A, how he was trying to pressure Dill. And now just... <laughs> Did you see him just, like, make that banana go right out of existence? It's just gone. Slice of the potassium. Quick slice. I don't know if Dill... No, okay, he kept his jump. So this is definitely a stage that, uh, even though I do think that Diddy's mobility can take advantage of things on this stage, this is definitely like Marth's domain. You know, he has the tippers on the platforms above, you know, uh, following him since all the way back in melee. Uh, while less prominent, uh, still a factor. He's able to contest space so safely because he doesn't have to commit to any strong movement option to challenge those first tier of platforms. His yeah. up tilt, his jabs even, forward tilt, all allow him to contest all of that space all while controlling center stage and the ledge. And every jump is a 50-50 where you don't know where that he's going to land, like at all. Actually, it's a 30-30-30 because he could just use his other jump and land on the other platform or go all the way across. Like the, the, the tracking on this stage is very difficult. This is that, uh, that third dimension of movement, you know? You see, this is what I was talking about earlier. You know, he gets to uh, do the 50-50. Oh, my God. Where was the DI on that? I mean, he was holding out because Dill just did, had just done a back air, and he ended up crossing him up. So he was all still holding out because he wanted to land. And so when he did that uh, upbeat, that was the direction he was holding, which he was just like, please kill me faster. <laughs> faster. Things looking good for Mr. Easy. sits at 131%, and while Dill's got banana and gun in hand, He's got a bit of a work ahead of him. He just needs to make this stock disappear, though. I really like that Dill went for that Z-drop just to uh, relinquish Diddy from the banana and just immediately run in and, you know, tomahawk grab, you know. And at the very ledge, though, E forced to respond in some way and trying to funnel that movement again. This is what makes this stage so strong for Dill when he has that ledge control. Although he was able to make it back on the stage because Dill kind of jumped the gun and kind of just like read a movement that was too soon and no oh lord. Where's the was... shield at? Uh, I'm feeling some M&Ms. Want to get some M&Ms later? Mm. I don't know what it is, but you know, I think I feel like that old military candy is really what I'm diving for right now. <laughs> Can't put oh, Jesus. That was almost the end. That was such abysmal movement by Dill. Because, like, I think he just had, like, <laughs> one... He had just one storyline in his head on how that was going to go. And he went, I'm going to do this, this, and this. Oh, my God. He's actually forward smashing there. This is terrible. Where am I going? I might die. But he's oh. not dead just yet. Staying alive at 79% and putting on massive damage to E. Tons of stray hits that are just working out really well in his favor. And Dill's just turn it up right now. He's looking to get the run back on his son. Really good uh, attempt by just Z-dropping. Honestly, like, I would have said that would have been, like, no, uh, just a safe thing to go for. But he actually ended up getting punished for it. He was so focused on pressing that Z button that he forgot all his other buttons. And Dill was like, <laughs> I'm up there. Down tilt, keeping Dill in check. Banana flopping around it. Bit of a uh, interesting usage of the banana, <gasps> but is that going to kill just yet? No, it's not. Fantastic Ooh. DI from E is keeping him alive, but he's not oh, able to beat Dill. Oh, no. And the Nair is bringing us into game five. And Dill reeling back in his chair. He knows that he missed a, a opportune situation to just seal that set. Really unfortunate for Dill, but good stuff to E. Uh, staying strong, not getting nervous. Um, you know, he, we're, we're here working at 60 hertz. He's at like 480 hertz. You know, he's a hundred hertz dude. Like, mm. He's got to figure it out. He's figuring out what he's got to do, what Dill's got to do, what he's got to do, when Dill's going to do something. What's Dill going to respond to when he does a thing? Yeah, E's movement reads are crazy sometimes. Like I said, like, when he did that S-Smash, like, it just completely broke what Dill was going to do. And it, it ended up almost costing him that sock, like, right then and there. But it was still, like, outlandish enough where nothing actually happened, but you saw how it completely like, freaked him out. Yeah. Freaked me out. It was, where one of, it was one of those things where the horrible option wraps around to being genius. But we'll have to see if Dill picks the better of those options here in Game 5, Smashville. So Dill picked Smashville.
and we didn't see the Sheik pick. He's feeling himself. All right. I, I totally understand that. I get, you know, when the way he took that set, I, I feel like he should have some momentum going on it. And he's just like, I'm going to keep riding this train. Um, I honestly think Dill may have picked Smashville to try and force out the Sheik. But not the reaction he's going to get. <gasps> Yo, Dill. All right. That, I see you, Zero Junior. That was some beautiful movement Ooh. from Dill. Excellent timing on it, too. Managing to get some solid follow up from the banana hitting at that. And with a good amount of percentage on. Ooh. Ooh oh, God. Right. Oh, Jesus. Dill is living on a prayer right now, but Goodbye, he's not Dill. doing it with a shield. Goodbye. Full charge, shield break, and that's just one less stock coming into this. In under a minute, he is putting Dill's bracket life on the line. I am not feeling this. Oh, no. He is doing really good at just like being everywhere Dill is. Ooh. He knew. Uh, he he did the the shortest end lag uh, to finish off that dance because like he was in a bad position, but he minimized it. All right, this still isn't uh, out for Dill because he is at that perfect uh, down tilt up smash percent, and he has uh, he hasn't built enough damage where it would be a super scary lead. So we'll just see. Oh, I don't like that. Oh no! Goodbye, Dill. All Goodbye. right. And that's going to be that. There's not going to be a run back for Dill as you move into Grand Finals with Mr. E moving in on the loser's side onto Ralphie. That is really unfortunate. I feel really bad about that. Dill crumpled into that game five. A fantastic <sighs> performance for Mr. E as he just managed to shake his opponent. What did he do at that very end? He did like a, a down air. He did right? down air. Yeah. He just like slid off the